Hi, and welcome to this Plant Factory quick tip. Here is a scene with a detailed stump that uses custom section shapes and high frequency displacement. A few small branches with twigs are growing from the stump, and now I would like to add a blending transition between branches and stump. Of course, I want to hide the blending transition as good as possible by making the blending shapes of the branches adapt to the underlying surface. Now, subdivision surface blending, which really welds both the parent and child geometries together, is usually the best method for blending transitions. But it also requires rather smooth surfaces to work successfully. With highly detailed geometry such as this one here, standard blending where the topologies are kept separate is often the only real choice you have. So how can you make the transition shape with standard blending as good as possible? While there is no definitive answer, Plan Factory has a few settings that make it easier to achieve a good blending result, and they are found here in the blending group of the child tab. I'm gonna turn on the wireframe and enable blending. The first criteria I want to check for are any blending artifacts caused by displacement on the trunk. I think it looks good for the most part, but I can do a quick comparison by checking ignore displacement. This will treat the transition shapes between branches and trunks as if displacement was not there, and it can also resolve extreme situations where the mesh would tear. Because the branch transition no longer fits the surface exactly, I could now use the post blending offset parameter to move the branch with its transition shape slightly more inside of the parent geometry. For this model, however, I think I prefer the blending shape that conforms to the displacement, so I'm just going to revert to what we had before. One area I still don't like is the upper area of the blending. The polygons are a bit squashed. This happens because of the growth angle between the branches and the stump. It is quite steep, and when I increase the growth angle to an even steeper value, the blending will break at a certain point, because the branches are now oriented too parallel to the parent. Fortunately, we can use the bending force parameter to fix this. There is an internal axis spline that runs through every segment node, and the bending force will procedurally bend the beginning of this very axis spline towards the parent, while leaving the remaining axis and branch shape completely untouched. So by increasing this parameter, I can successfully blend between the branches and the trunk even at very steep growth angles. And just for comparison, let's go back to the 30 degree angle that we had before and compare the topology. This is the transition area topology without any bending force, and this is the topology with a bit of bending force applied. It's clearly a lot better. And when we zoom out and look at the overall branch shape, you will notice that all directions and bending remain intact because only the very beginning of each branch is affected by the bending force. So with these parameters, it's now much easier to fine tune blending shapes in difficult situations. Thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.